I posted an article this morning, which I wrote yesterday, when the news of um, R. Kelly's daughter, you know, uh, stating for the first time yesterday that mm -hmm. she was sexually molested while she was growing up by the dad. Mm -hmm. So I took a look at um, personalities, popular personalities, mm -hmm. who have abused children in recent times. And I was asking the question, where are the safe spaces for children? Mm -hmm. Now, these are personalities who live in developed countries. Forget mm -hmm. about, you know, developing countries or underdeveloped countries. These are countries who boast of civilization to mm -hmm. be the bastions of civilization. Other their noses, you know, children were molested. All the people that I listed in that article are all convicted, you know, are all convicted uh, felons, mm -hmm. convicted, convicted for child sexual abuse. And so I began to say that, well, there can be safe places for safe spaces for our children until we embrace a systems approach to child safeguarding and protection. The question mm -hmm. is, who is a we talk about this thing a lot? Trusted mm -hmm. adult, trusted adult. Who is a trusted adult? Is an adult trusted because it's a clergyman? Mm -hmm. We have clergymen who have abused children, or a clergywoman. Is an adult trusted because it's a football coach? We have seen coaches who have abused children. Is an, is an adult trusted because he's a producer in Hollywood. When you watch the documentary uh, 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 Quiet on Set, you will see that there are producers who are supposed to be trusted. Is somebody supposed to be trusted because he's a medical doctor or a medical personnel who swore to the Hippocratic Oath? You will see that such people also have abused children. Is somebody supposed to be trusted because he's a father or he's a mother? We've seen fathers who have abused their children. So the only definition of a trusted adult is an adult that has submitted itself to a system, you know, a system of child safeguarding and protection. Mm -hmm. Under that system, the, that adult is subjected to a level of regulation. So that system is either manifesting in a policy or is manifesting in a family constitution where it is clear what constitutes abuse to our children. And the things that we need to do, the measures that need to be put in place, you know, because you see, as someone who was abused, I was abused physically, emotionally, sexually, growing up, I can tell you for free and first hand that the impact of abuse is eternal, except there's divine intervention. And when we talk about divine intervention, it still means that the one who has been abused must be ready to walk, you know, with his maker to find a way forward. So for me, Globally today, I think that there is there is lack of sensitization as to how to protect children. That is why in the places you call bastions of civilization, look at Epstein, who ended up, Jeff Epstein, who ended up committing suicide, you know, as a convicted person in prison. Now, this was somebody who rode with the cream de la cream, the most powerful in society. But he was involved in sexually molesting children, you know, trafficking of children and all of that. But he was able to rise to the topmost of society. So when you look at all of these things, so for me, we need to do more. And what do we need to do? We need to ask ourselves the critical question, how do we protect our precious children, irrespective of where they are, whether they are in the family, whether they are in, in, in schools, whether they are in the neighborhood, whether in their religious place of worship, anywhere they are, we must be able to answer that critical question, how do we protect children? And we're able to say, okay, there are safe spaces for our children. Tawo, before you explain to me that an adult who should be trusted or the only adult who can be trusted is the one who has submitted himself into a system uh, that regulates uh, what, what, what they do, I was thinking differently. I was thinking that every parent has been a child before. I has probably enjoyed the warmth of of, uh, of of their parents. And again, there is that natural uh, tendency of parents being so attached and protective of their children, right? And every human being has this uh, 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 warmness towards 
children. It is natural. It runs in, in our veins. So what gets into the mind of an adult who is abusive to, to a child? Is there any biological explanation of that or, or mystical well, explanation? I, I, don't under, I don't know. Well, the first thing is the fact that hot people do hot others. Mm. People were not properly raised. You know, they have nothing to give. Whenever the society turns to them, if they are not properly raised, their childhood was taken away from them. They don't understand. They were children, but they never experienced childhood. Mm. Childhood is, is a three-component thing. Number one, the fact that childhood is a foundation to be laid. Adulthood is not going to eventuate. Nobody becomes a responsible adult by reason of being born. Right when you nothing in this world appreciates by virtue of just being in existence, there has to be a level of tending. We're in this studio today because we built this studio. We're in this okay. studio today because we chose to be here. If we wish to be on this studio and we're just lying on our bed and just wishing, these wishes are all these all these beggars will write. We'll never mm -hmm. come on radio for everything that leads to progress in life is a subject of human effort. So if you are going to be a responsible adult. The foundation has to be laid in childhood. So mm -hmm. number one, childhood is, is the foundation for adulthood. So some people were children, they never, that foundation was never laid. And that's mm -hmm. why you said the dictionary today, one of the meanings of, 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 a, of a child in the dictionary is an adult who behaves like a child. So mm -hmm. it means that adulthood is not conferred on you by age. Adulthood is conferred by you by your ability to apply yourself to certain principles that create peace and harmony within the society. You are not a menace to society. You are not a public enemy. Hmm. Some people are menaces to their families. Some people are menaces to their neighborhood. Now, when I go to pick my, my letters in the box, they, there are times we pick up something, they say there is a pedophile in this environment, a convicted mm -hmm. pedophile. He lives in so, 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 so. When somebody like that moves in the environment, they, they alert us because such person has become a menace to society. So that's number one. Number two thing about, you know, childhood is the fact that childhood is a mystery to be studied. Hmm. It's a mystery to be studied. There's something, you know, I have a three-year-old. It's going to be three in October 25th. It took us, we, we, we were married for 15 years before we had that boy. Now I take a look at him. I keep studying him. I keep trying to understand him. But you see, it's going to be difficult for me to understand him if you don't have a, if I don't have a general understanding of what childhood is all about, mm -hmm. right? So childhood is a foundation to be laid. It's a mystery to be studied. Then childhood is a gift. It's a gift. Children come to us as gifts. And how do we treat a gift? If you don't know the worth of a gift, how are you going to treat the gift? So for me, we cannot become parents by virtue of the fact that we're parented. Many of us were supposedly parented, we were not parented. Many of us that were properly parented, then we have that legacy from our parents and we're able to transmit and trans translate that to our children. But you see, what you have is what you give. We cannot give what we don't have. So the foundational thing, therefore, is that you find people today abusing their children. You find people today ill-treating their children. We find people today who are doing to their children what their parents did to them because they are not even aware of how damaged they are. They are not even aware of the impact of how their children raise, how their parents raised them on them. So they think they are doing well. Have you seen in Africa when we say that, well, um, they said I was beaten. I've become who I am today. That's why the fact that I was beaten. I went through this, I went through that. So the question is, Ask the question. So you were beaten and you have become who you are. The question is, who have you become? Are you supposed to, to have become vis a vis who you are supposed to become? And hmm. these are fundamental issues that are out there that it's important for us to explore. Many questions to be asked, a lot of uh, issues to be explored, and of course we are on radio. Childhood is a mystery that has to be studied. It is uh, a gift, and also it is a foundation that has to be laid. We're talking about childhood 
adulthood and of course parenting on radio today and our context is um, these new books published by Taiwo Akilami, our guest today, The Burden and Wisdom of Parenting, The Journey from Erased Childhood to Transform Adulthood. Taiwo is live on radio today and the show is Apex Snapshots and the day is Saturday the 12th of October 2024. Taiwo, can you just take 30 uh, seconds to tell us uh, your relationship with writing? Uh, for how long have you been writing? Well, I think my first article was published in the newspaper on the 10th of 10th of June, Friday, 10th of June, 1988. I was just 18 years old. That's a long it was time published ago. in the Punch <laughs> newspaper. Right. You know, and Punch newspaper is one of the leading newspapers in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. I was just 18 years old. I, I had an experience with a military man who mm -hmm. came to our house, you know, to to deprive us. Yeah, mm -hmm. he, he practically robbed us. You mm -hmm. know, robbed my father of his torchlight. You know, took things from us because he was wearing a military uniform. And I felt, and I've been reading the Punch newspaper and other newspapers. I've been seeing people writing letters to the editor. Mm -hmm. And so I, I, I summoned courage and I put my pen to paper. I wrote that article with my hand and I showed it to my cousin, uh, Mr. Fola Jolly Olagoke. To help me take a look at it. and he took a look at it for me and i sent it to the punch i never mm -hmm. knew i would be published i just felt well people are expressing how they felt you know let me do that so i went ahead and wrote it and the truth of the matter is i sent it and few days after like two weeks after mm -hmm. or three weeks after thereabout the article was published as uh, it was titled soldier molesters by taiwa I, mean, I couldn't believe my eyes mm -hmm. my name was in the print for the first time. And the truth of the matter is that since then, I've not stopped writing. And mm -hmm. there's no major newspaper in Nigeria that I've not written for. You know, um, you know, Africa and Nigeria is the largest, is the biggest democracy, the largest population, uh, the largest black nation on mm -hmm. earth. There's no new newspaper what is named The Vanguard, Guardian, uh, Daily Independent, uh, Champion Newspaper, mm -hmm. uh, Business Day, you know, name it this day. I have, as a matter of fact, I've been a columnist in Business Day. I kept a column with them for four years. I've been a column also uh, in Daily Independent and different newspapers. Now, my Beautiful. first four books were published in 2010. Mm -hmm. In 2010, I put pen to paper and published four books, you know, wow. four small books. Uh, they were talking about the right of child, the right of children to life, the right of children to protection. I wrote another one, which I later changed the name to Teacher Fire, Teacher mm -hmm. as Social Workers. And so four books, and I wrote another one, The Right of Children to Life. Mm -hmm. And those were the four books that brought that really, you know, blew things up for me mm -hmm. with UNICEF. Because someone in UNICEF, I've been working with UNICEF before then, but someone in UNICEF saw those books and introduced me to a woman, uh, Mrs. Akiroye, who found my content interested mm -hmm. and began to, you know, work with me. Uh, in the area of child safeguarding and protection. Okay, so now um, we, we're talking about the latest ones. I, I see transforming child discipline into a culture of discipline. Then yes. there is the burden and wisdom of parenting, the journey yes. from an early childhood to transform yes. uh, adulthood. Are these two uh, different books? No, they, they are two different books. Okay. Now, so so the second book, transforming mm -hmm. child discipline to the culture of discipline, is a spin-off from the first book. So okay. I actually set out to write one book. And the book I set out to write was um, The Body and Wisdom of Parenting mm -hmm. from 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 the journey from an erased childhood to transform, uh, to transform adulthood. That's what I set out to write. But as I was writing um, that book, I got to a chapter well, I was talking, which I titled in 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 the first book, the the, the I was punished, I was punished but not disciplined, mm -hmm. and so I was writing that chapter. The more I wrote the chapter, the more bigger it became, you know, because I realized that I have a whole lot to share on this subject matter of discipline of children. So as it was becoming, if, if the first book, which is the the wisdom and body of parenting, is five hundred and ten pages, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, 510 pages, you know. So I saw that if I continue to put this other one in it, we are going to be going to like 800 pages because that... Okay, you know. so this is what we'll do today. Um, I will want us to, to focus on one of 
these books. Okay. Then okay. in the next edition of Apex Snapshots, we 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 get on we get on the other one. Okay. So um, let's see. Let's talk about the burden and wisdom of of, of parenting, uh, uh, which you say it's a comprehensive 21st century manifesto for family strengthening, uh, security, a friendly and protective environment for children, and rights based parenting. So, is this an autobiography? Is it a novel? Under what category would you? Place this this book. So so it's is 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 autobiographic in nature. Okay. It's autobiographic in planning, in in outlook, and in mm. in the, the, the delivery. But what I did, as a matter of fact, it, it tells the story of you of your life. Of my life, yes. But what okay. I did is I read. I'm I'm a fan of autobiographies. I have mm. read tons on tons and tons of biographies, mm -hmm. right? As a matter of fact, I prefer biographies to any self-help books. You know, mm -hmm. I, I read biography, I learn people's principles, people's life. They don't need to spell it out to say, this is my life. You know, but when mm -hmm. I read, I'm able to. So when I turned 40 in in um, uh, 14 years ago, mm -hmm. I set out, I took a look at my life. You know, I became a Christian at the age of 27. Mm -hmm. And I began to deal with the impact of my wrong upbringing. And so when I turned 40, I began to put, I began to try to reminisce, you know, put together all those things that I've reminisced upon about my childhood, the way I grew up, the good, the bad, the ugly. Most of it was ugly. And so when I set out, when I wrote that book in 20, in, in 14 years ago, I did not publish it. I published it as an audio book. So this year, uh, 14 years after, I just looked at the book. I said, okay, let me publish this book, mm -hmm. you know, as a, as a book. I first published as a voice, as a, as an audio book. And so when I set out to do that, um, now what I wrote, you know, uh, 14 years ago was a book that was divided into three. One, story. That's my story, what I went through. Then senses. Senses are the principles, right? Principles mm -hmm. that 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 I learned in, because of what I went through. Then we now have what I call stones. Stones are instructions. So mm -hmm. I wrote book as story, for example, uh, what I went through as a child, I was sexually molested. So I say sense, sex as innocence. That mm -hmm. is the story. Then I moved to the principles. What are the principles that governed, you know, that abuse? What, could my, what, what was it that my parents could have done differently that mm -hmm. could have protected me from being sexually molested. Then from there, I now move to stones. Stones mm -hmm. are instructions to parents and to caregiver, to everybody working with children. And for every chapter, I now created what I call a manifesto. What is this manifesto? For example, under chapter seven, which is mm -hmm. sex as innocence, I created a manifesto. For every chapter, I created a manifesto. The manifesto there is talking about what exactly, how do we really teach child, sexual, uh, uh, child sexuality education? So mm -hmm. I created a curriculum right there, which is which we call every part of my body is private to me. It's a trademark. Mm -hmm. So I created a, a, a curriculum, how to teach it. I created a comprehensive family, you know, constitution. I created a comprehensive, uh, um, uh, a comprehensive policy that you can follow. I did what I call definition of terms. What mm -hmm. is child sexual abuse? Who is a child? What does the law say about it? So for every chapter, you have a massive you know, uh, a massive manifesto that that you can work with. It's like a handbook. So mm -hmm. in the book, you have my story, you have the senses, you have the stone, you now have an embedded handbook that you can use, that can spur you to action, right? Mm -hmm. uh, there's a chapter where I spoke about, you know, uh, uh, physical abuse, uh, which I said I was beat, I was punished, but not, not, not disciplined. Then mm -hmm. I share the story, I share the, the senses, I share the stone, and I share the manifesto of basic things that we need to pay attention to when mm -hmm. it comes to uh, working with children and this subject matter of child discipline. So what we have there is a compendium of a 510 pages of, of a compendium. It's like, it's from, it's, it's, it has a biographical, you know, plot and background, but it dovetails into self-help. So you can, you can, if, so, so that's why we call it the burden and wisdom of parent, 
parenting mm. comes with a lot of body. And when we are talking about parents, uh, let me quickly say, we are not talking only about biological parents. Parents in this instance, in the foreword of the book, written by Mr. Lakune Shorion, who were co-founders of the Power Parenting Company, he wrote extensively to make us understand that it is parenting there is about the fact that everyone who has influence on our children is a parent, including teachers, mm -hmm. including people in the library, including um, neighbors, anyone, including non-living things like TV, anyone who has influence on our children is a neighbor. You know, that is very, very key. So those are fundamental issues that that is the outlook of the book. Hmm. That's a